because we've got Melissa Collins who is here to share with us uh, about how to rehab animals. And, and as we were talking off cam uh, camera, it's not as simple or uh, as hard as one might think. So first of all, welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about your role with the department. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, part of my role at the department is I serve as a wildlife biologist um, and I'm the permits coordinator. So I manage a few programs, one of which is the wildlife rehab program. And what is that? Well, wildlife rehab is the treatment and care of injured and orphaned animals with the intent to release those said animals back into the wild. I would think that you have two kinds of people. One would be the person who sees an injured animal in their yard and decides to bring it in. Why, why is that a bad idea? Well, I mean, <laughs> or is it, it a bad idea? Well, it, it could be a bad idea. You know, you need specialized training, um, perhaps in capture, um, of course in rehabilitation, um, but you're setting yourself up for potential disease um, or potential injury. You could be bitten or maybe scratched. If you don't know the animal, I would assume you Right, could especially with an injured animal. Um, so, so you have a rehab, and the other misconception is that it would take a biologist to learn how to rehab an animal, which is also not true, correct? Correct. So we have a set of criteria that individuals, when they apply, they have to meet. Um, so we make certain to work with those individuals. I absolutely love this program and adore the people that I work with. So I take extra care and time with these individuals to make sure that they understand what they're getting into and so that they can properly learn to do this. Maybe putting you on the spot, do you know how many rehabbers you have? Or at we least have close to 80. Okay, and, and are those all in are all over the state? Or? They're all over the yeah. state. However, I have a five-year goal. I would like to see one rehabber in every single parish, and I have not yet met that goal, so it's my five-year plan. You have one here in St. Tammany? We, we have a few here, but That's not good. all are listed. Not everyone wants uh, to be known. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You probably get some crazy requests. Yeah. If you so going back to I find an injured animal in my yard, on the road, whatever, uh, I, I don't I want to bring it home, but I, I want to find the expert. What do I do? Who, who so do I the, probably the quickest way for you to get in touch with a wildlife rehabilitator is to access it through some sort of media and access our website. You can go to wlf.la.gov and find wildlife rehabilitation and you'll find the list of individuals who are licensed perhaps in your area or even you can filter it by parish. So that's the quickest way. Another way is you can contact any of the wildlife offices or division offices and they can give you that list or provide you with some individuals if you you don't have internet access. Gotcha. Um, is there a, I don't know how to ask this question, I find the animal, I, I find that person, does that person come get the animal? Do I typically have to take the animal to the No, so before? our rules and regulations state that in order to transport, you're, you're in possession of that animal. So it's illegal to be in possession of wildlife in the state without some sort of permit. So you do need to find a rehabilitator who has a transporter. A lot of these individuals cannot take the time to transport. So instead, they have individuals who are licensed but use the rehabilitator's facility yeah. to provide that care for those animals. So you would call them and they would set it up for you. And then they take them, is the facility typically an uh, uh, external place or they, is it, could it be at home or could it be either? So a lot of times we, we use the word facility and it confuses people mm -hmm. and it makes them think that they need to have this grandiose million dollar um, entity or facility and it's not like that. It could be done out of your home. There's a few caveats that we need to make sure that you know you, you fulfill before you do something like that. But typically, it could be anywhere from a little cage for one animal, because that's all you can handle, up to something very large. Got it, all right, so, so if, I, if I'm interested in becoming a rehabilitator, how extensive is the study? You know, what, what would I go through to, to get trained or licensed or whatever the process? Okay, so like I said, we have a, a pretty large um, requirement list. The two most important things are taking the basic skills class, which we're actually offering at headquarters on Quail Drive in Baton Rouge, September 16th. It's a Saturday from 9 to 6. Um, and then the, the other side of that, the other more important aspect of it is getting the training that you need. So we pair you with a wildlife rehabilitator who is licensed, whom can mentor you, and you serve sort of as an, in, an intern. Mm -hmm. And they, they'll help you and guide you through it. So you could have some experience already, maybe you worked for a vet, or maybe none whatsoever. You just love animals. Yeah. Um, you, you get the animal for the first time, you, you get that, that specialist, the wildlife specialist to call them, is that how that 
typically works if I'm a rehabilitator and I get an animal I don't know what to do? Is it so it's really important for these wildlife rehabilitators that are licensed to connect with one another and most of them know each other. And so a lot of them are really specialized. You know, some might be really good at um, rehabbing, I don't know, maybe a rabbit, whereas someone else might be really good at rehabilitating a squirrel. And they may get the opposite, the, the animal that they don't really desire. So they'll call one another and say, hey, can we trade off? Or, hey, I've got this anomaly. Do you, have you ever seen this before? Can you help me figure this out? And nine times out of 10, one of these rehabbers has that very specialized solution. Is this limited to certain animals? That may be a dumb question, but are there certain animals that, that a rehabilitator can't, cannot handle? Um, so wildlife rehabilitators cannot rehabilitate alligators, deer, bear. Um, so there, there's a few other instances and in, um, species, but for the most part they can rehabilitate most mammals and most uh, migratory bird species. Um, there are some other permits that are required, um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service permits mm -hmm. that are required. But we can walk individuals who are interested in the program through those application processes. Okay. And do they get paid or just a... No, they do not. They are not compensated just by us. Kindness is because you, you got to love to do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Got it. Um, you already kind of covered how you find a rehabber uh, in the area um, and, and how they become... Uh, a rehabilitator would you is the training itself difficult I mean it, it, does it depend on I guess what you know going in to uh, to the training no so I mean of course if you have prior experience like I mentioned before say you worked for a vet um, then you're gonna have a little bit more knowledge than maybe someone who's never experienced this whatsoever but the training is not difficult it's an all-day class and it covers topics like pharmacology capture handling diet Minimum, minimum cage requirements, those sorts of things. So it's, it's meant to be a basic class for individuals who have zero experience whatsoever. And if I don't want to become a rehabilitator, but I do want to help, uh, what, what, what can I do? Oh, absolutely. So there are wonderful, wonderful ways for people to get involved. They can intern with a wildlife rehabilitator. If that even means you show up for one, once a month, or maybe you only want to do it two times a year. You can clean cages, help feed animals, other sorts of tasks. Um, we also are always looking for transporters, even if you're only willing to travel an hour. Say you're willing to travel an hour here, an hour back. We can figure out a way for you to meet up with someone else to get that animal to a wildlife rehabilitator. But there's, there's all you need is the license and to have a rehabber who's willing to work with you. That's really important. I would love to see more people come forward and offer those sorts of services. Again, even if it's only once or twice a year. Do you need training to be a transporter or certain setup? You still need to, you have to have the license. Okay. So you have to meet all of the requirements. However, the facilities requirement would be slightly different because you would be using someone else's, a licensed rehabilitator's facility. Mm -hmm. But we would have to go through the process and make sure everything is okay. Okay, so you got a, a big group training in September. Otherwise, do, do, does the individual show up to headquarters? Is there a way to do this online? Uh, what are the other options other than wait until September to, to get signed up? All right, so it's never too late to contact me to get involved and work with a, a licensed rehabilitator. You don't need to wait until September. Start the process now. We can help you be paired with a licensed rehabilitator. And then once you are, when September does roll around, come and take our class. And then we'll slowly work with you to get those requirements fulfilled. Is the, the class an, on a, offered on an annual basis, semi-annual? Annual. Or? Okay. Annual, yeah. yeah. And if we feel that the need is greater, then perhaps there may be more. But for right now, it's annual. Got it. And again, you mentioned uh, the website, but reiterate that again, how people could find out more about this program. All right. So they can visit the LDWF website at wlf.la.gov. <laughs> Anything else we missed? Anything no, I think like we've to touched on everything. Thank you so much you for having it. me. Pleasure to meet you, Melissa. We'll, we'll see you or somebody else here next month. All right.